Howdy investors, Matthew Pizzagatti here. We're going to go a little bit back to basics on this video. So if you're already an expert in the drip ecosystem as a whole, I'm talking the faucet, animal farm, drip garden, you could probably just skip this entirely. But I did see a comment from someone asking, uh, you know, they were kind of confused as to the faucet, the garden, the animal farm what should they go into next because they had started out in the garden and I guess they were looking for a little more exposure into these other uh, pieces of the protocol of the whole drip ecosystem. So I thought we'd touch on all of those again. Um, also in light of some of the re recent information from the developer, um, for those who don't know, the developer goes by 4X Shark and he gave an AMA, you know, that means ask me anything. He gave a, a very long interview, answered a lot of questions just the other day. Um, and that shed a little more light on onto some things that even even I wasn't aware from the from the beginning. So let's start by talking about the protocol as a, as a whole. Let's start by discussing the risk factor. Um, number one, before I say anything, you should always remember any YouTubers you listen to, any articles you read online uh, about any of these crypto projects, these protocols, these uh, degen <laughs> crypto investments, as, as they call it. Uh, we're not financial advisors. I'm not specifically. So we can't tell you what you should do with your funds. Most of us are just documenting our journey through the space and telling you if we make money or not. And that's, that's pretty much it. Um, but I also like to you know, kind of... Uh, do the the autopsy on the longer videos for you on the on the white papers of these protocols. I like to break that down into easier, um, understandable chunks that may be a lot to take in if you're just getting into the space and trying to figure out what's what because some of it is kind of confusing, right? So that being said, I'm not a financial advisor. Can't tell you what to do with your hard earned funds and money. Um, but I can tell you what I'm doing, and I can tell you about the protocols as much as I know about them, right? So what do we know about Drip based on Forex Shark, based on the developer, based on what he's he's saying? So obviously all of the crypto projects and protocols, well, all the way down to uh, to Bitcoin, to uh, Dogecoin, to uh, any of these these types of coins that you've heard of, they're all extremely high risk. They're all extremely volatile. Now, being extremely volatile is uh, having a you know, high volatility. You'll know this if you've done any options trading um, or something similar in the financial space. But sometimes that's really good for us. You know, if, if I just wanted to buy a coin like Bitcoin or, or even Drip, if I wanted to buy the Drip coin token, whatever you want to call it, and hold on to it, well, the volatility is really good for me in in that way if it if it rockets you know if it skyrockets to the moon as they say i make a lot i make a lot right and uh so that's that's really good and then likewise if it's going down that creates if i if i have faith in the project if i think it's going to go back up at some point going down having that uh direction in the volatility is also really good for us right because that's going to create a better entry point for me. Or if I already have a position, I can do what they call dollar cost averaging. I'm I bought some at 130, and now it's 30, so I can buy a couple more at that price point. Average all those prices together across the number of shares or tokens or coins, whatever you want to call them, um, and I can lower my per coin per token price which when the price goes back up, if we have faith in the project, if we think we're bullish on it, we think it's going to go up, that just maximizes the profit that I can, can make per token. So the volatility is not always bad, right? The volatility is not always bad if we're just going to buy it and hold it. Um, so let's talk about risk because we're, we're talking about risk in general. All things in the crypto space have a lot of volatility. They're all high risk. Um, you could get wrecked tomorrow. Let's put that in perspective. Like any of these developers could be bad actors. They could crash the whole uh, protocol, say that there was an exploit, whatever they want to say, and uh, they could they could take your money, right? That could always happen. So we always want to keep that risk in mind. But um, all that being said, what, how, what do we know about Drip? We know that Drip, the faucet at least, so this main 
starting protocol here, the faucet, this contract, this one has been running for a year, just hit its year anniversary. So that's kind of unprecedented in this space uh, because you do see so many quote unquote rug pulls or exploits where uh, the token just crashes, all your all the liquidity gets pulled out somehow magically. Sometimes they'll blame an exploit, which is still technically the dev's fault for missing it in the, in the code, right? I mean, it does happen. It is a legitimate thing that can happen, but that's why we want developers who create projects that have longevity, that are going to last, and that are you're gonna, going to be around. And, and the Drip Faucet has proven itself to make millionaires, to make these whales or make people into whales, depending on how much they put in when they got in, um, within that first year. We've got guys maxing out their wallets uh, right around now, around this March, April, May time period. A lot of the guys who got in a year ago are all maxing out their their wallets. And we'll talk about what, what that is in just a second. But um, so so that's that's something. We, I wanted to counter... Uh, make a counterpoint to the idea of the risk that yes, all of these projects, these protocols are very high risk. But when you take something like drip, that's been around for a year, um, that's really unprecedented. And it shows it gives a lot of credit to the developer that yes, he forked this off of other code. But I think he's made enough improvements uh, to where it's 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 a much better standing than some of the other projects that we've seen come and go that just you know, got wrecked due to exploits or rug pulls or whatever it was. So let's talk about risk now more specifically into the whole drip ecosystem. And we're going to touch on, on all the different parts because there's the drip faucet, there's the animal farm, which is a, a separate site, but still part of the same developers projects and part of the whole same ecosystem. And within the animal farm, we have drip garden and, and other things. So as Forex would, had said on the AMA the other day, uh, that's that's the developer, Forex Shark. he said, just holding the DRIP token. So that means buying DRIP. Um, you can actually do that from this uh, swap page with uh, BNB. So you buy DRIP, and then you just hold the token and hope the price goes up, right? So we could do that. I mean, there were some all-time highs. We were getting some leveling out here, and we may see that climb back up to all-time highs again this this year, or even higher. People who are bullish in the system think it'll go like way even higher than it has. Uh, you know, some of the the people really like to predict the thousands of dollars. I don't know if we're going that high, but I think we'll at least see those couple hundred range again once uh, all this new capital keeps flooding in for the next wave of whales. Try to say that you know ten times fast. Um, so that's 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 uh, step one. That's what we could just buy the drip token and we could hold it, and that's the lowest risk according to the developer. So we could just buy it, hold it, and it's lowest risk because your capital's not locked, your principal's not locked in anywhere when you're you're not staking it yet, and you could sell it just as quickly as you bought it. Uh, now there are taxes in the system of uh, of drip. There are taxes, uh, and there's also a whales tax. So. When you buy or sell, and then, um, or at least when you at least when you sell, or I'm sorry, yeah, this is on deposits into the faucet. I'll have to pull up the white paper if we're gonna go over all the all the taxes and fees here. Let me double check real quick while we're talking about it. I just I didn't want I didn't want to misspeak because uh, there are taxes and fees for different actions in the system. Ah yes, here's a section I was I was looking for. Um, there is a ten percent tax on buys. However, um, if you if you buy directly from the website uh, with the fountain here, then it waives that ten percent on buy. There's still a ten percent tax on sells, um, but not on buying. So yes, talking about risk, uh, the faucet. Uh, before we get to the faucet, just holding the drip token would be the lowest amount of risk, right? You're just holding it. If it goes up, you, you can sell it. Um, and you're not staked. You're not locked in. So the faucet would be the second level of risk, according to uh, Forex from the AMA the other day, if I, if I heard him correctly. The faucet's the next level of risk. Now, what happens with the faucet is that you deposit, and there is a 10% tax on deposits. And all of these taxes and fees, by the way, are to 
they this is one of the reasons the project the protocol has lasted so long uh it would, has that level of longevity because there's these extra taxes and and fees when you uh when you initiate transactions within the contract and that discourages people just pumping 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 and then selling off right it kind of helps uh limit how much that's happening and how much price manipulation you would see if that were allowed to to happen willy-nilly just all over the place. So you're staking your principal in with this 10% tax. You are depositing drip into the faucet. And then you get what you, happens is you get 1% return daily. So you have a 1% return every day, and you can have a max of 365% return on your drip. So I have nine drip in here now. That's not how much I put in, but with compounding, that's what I've ended up with. And so my maximum payout is 33.024. So this is lower risk than some of the other components of the whole ecosystem because uh, you're not being judged against any of the other members. There's no type of variable rate of return. You're getting a straight 1% of however much drip is showing here. You get 1% per day, and you can recompound it. So you can compound it back in, and that works like a compounding interest calculation. If you run the numbers on that, it snowballs really, really quickly. And you can have up to 365% return on your deposits. So not on your initial uh, deposit, but on however much is showing here. So whenever you compound, you actually raise your max amount of drip. And this can go up to 365,000. Don't let me misspeak again. I'm checking the white paper. I, we always want to do our, our research and, and check uh, the white paper, right? Make sure that we're not uh, giving incorrect information. Ah, okay. Yeah, after I reread... Uh, I had uh, mixed up 365%. So you can get up to 100,000 drip is going to be the, the limit. So that's the max payout is 100,000 drip that you could actually claim out of the system. So once you reach a certain amount of deposits, obviously you would stop compounding because it wouldn't make any sense. You could only claim. I mean, you'd keep compounding some if you wanted to just help the protocol overall, help the whole uh, the whole system. But... Um, yeah, once you hit a hundred thousand drip as the max, once that shows here, your wallet's essentially maxed out and you'd only be claiming at that point. But yeah, so there's no variability here. I mean, that's why there's lower risk. Um, you're going to get 1%. You're going to have 1% per day, up to 365% of your deposits, um, relatively low risk, right? So we could hold the token or we could deposit in the faucet. And then we move over to the uh, animal farm site, which is part of the whole drip ecosystem, also Forex Shark. And we look at the, uh, the drip garden. Now I'm going to touch on the garden next because there are all of these other components to the animal farm. I'm not exactly sure where they all would fall as far as, as risk level. If, if I had to put them in, in, in order, because I, I've only, I'm also only in the drip garden, if I had to put them in order after the faucet, I think I would say um, farms. I would say farms and pools and pig pen are all going to be lower relative risk um, than, say, the garden or the piggy bank. So I would probably put it in the order of farms, pools, and, and the pig pen. And then after that, I would say uh, Piggy Bank and then Drip Garden. I think Drip Garden is going to be the highest risk out of, out of all of these, and we'll, and we'll talk about why. Um, but the farms, the pools, and the pig pen are like how you might imagine staking is. So um, now the faucet, your capital is locked. But the farms, pools, and pig pen, you can, you can take your stake out. So they're sitting there, but I can take them out at any time. So they're sitting there, they're earning rewards, but I can remove them at any time. So to me, that indicates lower risk. If, if there's some big change in the system and I feel like I need to pull all of my farms and pools and, and pull out of the pig pen, 
Am I, I may have misspoke on the pig pen. That one, I don't know that you can pull these out. You may actually be staking these as as well. It's paused right now, so I can't see the the uh, button. So we may, may have to put it in the order of farms, pools, um, and then pig pen, and then piggy bank and garden. But um, you know, the, to me, that indicates slightly lower risk. If I can put my funds in and I can pull them out, like in the uh, pools here where my dogs are, I can remove my dog liquidity anytime I want. Um, and so to me that that's a little lower risk because it's my capital's not locked. So, um, to, and to explain these a little further, not just talk about, about the risk. Um, so the farms, you can put LP tokens, which is a liquidity pool token, which is a, a half and half, right? So for instance, this one, I'm staking dogs slash BUSD. So half dogs, half BUSD, um, half drip BUSD on this one and so on and so forth. And each of these earns uh, different a different type of token as a reward. So in the animal farm, so we already talked about drip, you know what the drip token is. In the animal farm, you have pigs and dogs, which are the main currency of the realm, so to speak. So in the farms here, you could be earning pigs or you could be earning dogs. Now, if you're going to follow the whole um, flow chart of how it was imagined this should work, is that you would likely want to be earning dogs first. You'd want to be earning dogs, and then you could put your dogs into one of these single staking pools right here. You're investing dogs to earn pigs, and then your pigs could then go into piggy bank if you create the LP token for those, or um, they could go into the pig pen. And don't pay attention to any of this messaging right now. There was a uh, pause in the contract. It's about to restart on the, uh, the 21st. But, um, so that's, that's kind of the whole flow chart is that you could take your dogs. So you, you could start farming something else to get dogs. So you could, you could farm, I'm trying to think of one of the more common ones here or what one that I was, that was, I was already in. You could do like a cake BUSD. Um, that's, that's not a, a bad one. There's a, yeah, there's a number you could do to get dogs, and then you could stake your dogs with BUSD, or you could do drip BUSD here directly to get pigs. So if you already had a bunch of drip that you were claiming from the faucet, for instance, this would be a way that it could flow from the faucet. You could pair it to BUSD and stake it here into this farm, and you'd be earning pigs for the next portion of the of wherever you want to take that. And of course you can take profit along the way, right? You have this whole ecosystem, this whole flow chart that you'd be running through, um, but you would skim a percentage of profit off along the way. Or you could wait until you get all the way to the pig pen, you know, make this whole passive, kind of like a, one of those passive clicker games, you know, where your, your lemonade stand makes more uh, money and then you buy a newspaper stand and that makes passive money so on and so forth you could do that all the way up to funnel it into pigs and just earn straight busd uh, which you could use practically anywhere i mean that's pegged to the to the dollar right i mean it's it's like the u.s dollar so um you know if you want to take profit there you could or put it back into something else in in the system but so you have farms and then you have single staking pools which is just um, single assets like just BUSD to get dogs or just WNB to get dogs and then dogs to pigs. So th these were some of the, since I didn't want to mess with some of the, the farms, this is what I was doing was I was, was trying to stake, uh, individual tokens to get dogs and then in turn, turn those dogs into pigs. So once this all unpauses, that's, that's kind of my strategy to carry everything through. Um, and then you, you have the pig pen. Now the pig pen, when you, when you put pigs into this, uh, this staking protocol here, the way Forex Shark has uh, described this is that you become essentially partial owners of the system. And then based on your percentage in the animal farm system here in the pig pen, you actually get to vote on um, proposals here. And I don't, know if i don't think i've joined this yet because i don't actually have any active um stake in the system here in the pig pen but so not only do you earn busd rewards but there will also be proposals here for improvements or enhancements to the uh pig pen and once those get voted on or i'm sorry to the animal farm and drip in general once those get voted on uh the proposals then 
uh, you know, Forex Shark will take action in that. Him and his develop development team will take action and and put those proposals into action, right? So that's kind of an added neat benefit to make you almost like a, a co-owner of the whole ecosystem. And, you know, that's that's neat for some people. That, that doesn't appeal to me a, a whole lot, but it may to you. And it'll be more attractive when we actually have some proposals in here. So moving on up the, the chain of, of risk, I'm, I'm going to hop over to the garden and the piggy bank. So the garden and the piggy bank function in similar ways, but the piggy bank offers time locking, which will give you a greater bonus. So just to run through the, the drip BUSD garden real quick and, and just to illustrate why it's more risk is that um, it has a... So I guess we should really start from the beginning and say that uh, in the garden, there's plants and there's seeds. There's plants in the, and there's seeds. These are not actually tokens. These are not actually coins. The plants um, and the seeds both represent value in the system. So when you deposit this LP token, this drip BUSD, you're actually buying plants. So the plants instantly become representations of the value that the LP token that you tossed in into this game, we'll call it. So I put the L LP in there. Right now, a plant costs about 49 cents. So for every 49 cents worth, or 0 0.023 of an LP, I'm going to get one plant. So if you wanted to buy as many plants as I have right now, that's about $930. Now, here's what's happening. Every day, um, I shouldn't say every every. Well, yeah, every day, each plant, each plant you have drops 86.4 thousand seeds. And it takes 2,592,000 seeds to make one plant. So every day, you have this much dropping in seeds. Once you have uh, however many whole numbers of this multiplier here, you know, multiply that up, that's how many plants you, you, could, you could compound back into your garden. So you're, you're using those seeds to plant new plants or turn them into new plants. So I'm making about 63.5 plants a day. Um, and it's about every 22 minutes that I could compound one plant. I'm letting mine kind of stack up right now because the piggy bank's about to launch and I want some free funds to harvest um, to throw into the, into the piggy bank. But in theory, what's happening with this, the way this works, is that... Um, those seeds represent a portion of an LP token. And so in turn, they have a dollar amount that it could be said they are worth. And any time that you decide to pull that value out, you harvest seeds. You click this, or you could compound back in and keep growing your, your investment here, um, or you could harvest. So um, in theory, the way this game is working is that you can have up to 3% return a day. So on whatever your investment is, your, your principal here, let's say I have, um, well, we're calling it $939 is what my current value is based on what the current LP value is um, in dollars. So we're getting about 3% a day uh, in return. Now what's happening at the same time is that the value of a plant is actually dropping. So this LP per plant is declining every day. And we in, in the whole system, we call it a decay, right? That's what we've been referring to it as. So there is a decay. Um, by my estimation, when, when the drip L, LP price, the drip USD LP price was steady and going up to all-time highs because uh, as an idiot, kind of like an idiot, that's, that's when I got in, right? Was at the all-time high. Um, when that was steady and going up and when the contract balance was steady and going up, um, that decay really wasn't super high. It was maybe, I, I don't know, 1%, 1.5. Um, so there is a decay, but you can outrun that with your compounding of your plants. But of course, you're only going to outpace the decay. Um, well, you're not going to, you're not going to outpace it in a huge way unless all of the factors are positive in your favor. So the strip USD price kind of needs to stay steady or be on the rise. Contract balance kind of needs to be steady or on the rise, 
or you're not going to be beating that decay. And if this chart lets me go back far enough, um, how far does this go back? This only goes back to about March, but you can see a couple big jumps here, like right here, right here around uh, March 4th to March 5th, and then right around here from the 11th to the 12th. Those big jumps are because I got some some referrals trickled in, some larger um, referral bonuses from, from individuals who decided to join with my link. Um, but other than that, you can see that because Drip was on a downturn, even though I was compounding multiple times a day, I'm really barely breaking even and, and I'm actually losing value. And even up here, you can see that like I'm barely keeping level, I'm losing value. Um, after about, and you can see that all the way across really, after about the first, um, that, this whole time I was religiously compounding, um, after about the first, when drip, L, drip started to level off, it wasn't dropping like it had been for a month. You can see now, compounding multiple times a day, my LP's been on the rise. I've heard a number of people tell me conflicting reports, by the way, so that's, that's why I say this isn't advice for you directly. I mean, this is me documenting what I'm seeing. I may be getting a number of referrals, and I can't see those. There's no way to actually track referrals in the drip garden. So if they are trickling in from new people signing in or adding, adding capital with my link, I can't really tell. Um, but I do see that when Drip had been more steady, my LP, at least personally, was on the rise. And so I'm starting to earn more a day um, and my compounding's taking over the decay and it is gaining. So if this Drip BUSD price continues to level out or goes up, and it will if Drip goes up, if, if Drip the price of drip starts going up again, which I think it will throughout the end of the year, that's extremely bullish for the garden. Um, that's really cool for the garden. That'll, that'll improve it a lot. Um, as far as like all of our profits will explode upward and we could actually um, <clears throat> start harvesting some. Same with the contract balance. When people see the garden's doing well and they see drips doing well, they'll start putting more capital in. They'll raise the contract balance, which also helps us beat the, the decay out. Um, when those when those levers are being op, uh, hit properly, the decay can actually slow down or even tick up a little bit, um, where instead of, you know, it can actually pause or, or rewind a little bit, I should say. So instead of this 0 0.23, we can go back up to a, a 0 0.24, 0 0.25, or it'll just pause for a few days if all those positive levers are being pulled uh, at the same time. So uh, the garden... The garden is higher risk, but higher reward. For those especially who have very large bags in here and they're compounding, they're making, you know, I'm making 60 plants a day. Remember, every 30 plants essentially gains you another plant per day. So my 63 plants, if I were to compound that in a single day, the next day I'll actually be making 65 plants. And then when I compound that, uh, I'll be making, you know, 67 plants, so on and so forth. And I, I have a good spreadsheet for this that I can, uh, that I'll have in the description that you can go check out the video and, and check out the spreadsheet for calculating how much you would have over time. But um, so this compound interest is incredibly powerful. And especially if you have a large number of plants and you're just uh, compounding hundreds of extra plants a day, your LP should be growing as long as drip LP price is not just plummeting. And if the contract balance will level out and start coming back up, which all of those things should happen with drip swinging upward. And if you're positive on the drip ecosystem, if you like the developer, if you think he has good things coming down the pike, you know, you listen to the AMAs and you're confident in his whole protocol, then I think I'm, I'm, I'm bullish at least. For me personally, I'm bullish on, on drip and the whole ecosystem coming back up. And so I think the garden will do well over time. But all that being said... Why else is it high risk? What else makes it high risk? So the decay is built in. That's on purpose. It's supposed to make um, buying in more attractive for new capital because I bought in at $6 a plant. Some people bought in at $30 a plant, but now people can buy in at 50 cents a plant. And so that's going to keep dropping. Um, you know, it's not going to reach zero because it's percentage based, right? At some point, a plant might be worth 0 0.0005 uh, of a cent. And that's okay, because that means instead of that person being able to buy uh, 30 plants, now they can buy 3,000 plants or whatever it is when that new capital rises. Or even yourself, if you want to add new capital, like if I want to add new capital today, I'm buying plants for only 50 cents. So I'm kind of dollar cost averaging. We mentioned that term earlier. 
Um, and the compounding is so powerful. Compound interest, if you look at calculators for how compounding works, and especially like the spreadsheet I've made for the garden, you can see that it just exponentially grows. It does a really good job at outpacing the decline. Um, and that lower price plant, as time goes on, is meant to attract new investors. There's a handy little chart down here kind of comparing to other minor type games, mining type games, um, where, yeah, we're going to see this decline, but then increase your, your buying power as the contract balance grows and as time passes. So it's just trying to get all the players a fair rate so that you know, if you get in now or somebody else gets in six months from now, you should both have a similar rate of return. You should both be in a fair position to make money. So now we get back to the high risk. The high risk really isn't the decay. I mean, it, it is if the contract balance and if the drip price isn't doing well. During those downtrends, you really can't claim. and uh, Or you wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to harvest. You want to keep compounding. And, and the reason for that is that one of the other mechanics built into this is that not only is there kind of a time decay, but you are being judged against everyone else in the system. So if the average user in the system is compounding 80% um, uh, of the time and you are not doing that, if you're compounding 20% of the time and harvesting the rest uh, of the time in that type of ratio then you're doing worse than the average user in the system and you're actually not going to be able to see a full 3% or 3.3%, whatever that max return is. So it is a game in that sense that there's some competition between you and the average user. You want to compound as much as possible and then harvest, say, on the weekends or maybe once a week. Or if you have so many plants coming in that you're compounding 10 times a day, you might only want to harvest two out of those 10 times a day, right? Just just so you keep your compounding a rate way over the harvest rate. If you do that, you should be fine in beating out the other people, and then you're only really combating uh, decay at that point. So there's some strategy involved. It's not just a simple 1% per day from the faucet. So you can get a higher rate of return, but um, you're gonna slow yourself down, you're gonna penalize yourself, if you're harvesting too often. So there's strategy in there, even with the higher rate of return, and that's why in turn it's higher risk, but I still think we can make a lot in here uh, once that upturn starts happening, or, or if the values level off how they are and stay that way. So then we move on to the piggy bank, and the piggy bank is essentially the garden. When you're depositing um, pigs LP in here, you're creating a miniature garden is kind of how I look at it. Except instead of seeds and plants, you have truffles and piglets. So you're buying piglets, and uh, they're going to find truffles. And then you can compound your truffles into, I guess, feeding your pigs to get more piglets, if that's the way you want to think about it. That's what represents the value in the piggy bank. So again, these are not real tokens. They're just representing the LP value of the pigs BUSD LP tokens that you have. So very similar to the garden because you can get up to 3% daily ROI. Um, I imagine we're still being compared against the average user in the system. But the one huge bonus we have is uh, that we have a time lock bonus. So we're going to input, and while we're depositing, we can actually do a time lock. And so we can basically commit to not harvesting anything in this I'm going to call it like a pocket, right? Because you're going to have different piggy banks listed here. You're going to have different pockets, little banks. Um, so every time you deposit, you're actually going to be creating a new little bank or pocket. Um, and in that little pocket there, you can choose how long you want to time lock. And so you could ladder this. You could do 10 weeks and then deposit a little more and do 20 weeks. And you could deposit a little more and do, you know, on and on. And you can see this bonus. You get this bonus on top of what you're already getting from the compounding, which is up to this 3% daily ROI. So this bonus is actually applied to your principal. So if I'm applying, uh, say, equivalent of, uh, I don't know, let's say 50 LP. Let me just show you the uh, way this is exponentially applied. So 30% of that multiplier bonus is added to the principal in the first 75% of the stake. So the majority, the three-fourths of, of the 
the time lock time, um, 30% of your multiplier bonus is added then. And then in the last 25% of the time, bam, you know, it slams all the rest of that bonus in there onto your principal. And so now your principal is uh, 40, say if you do 11 weeks, by the end of that, your principal has had this 40% bonus applied to it alongside that you've been compounding your truffles the whole time and getting that up to 3% a day. And then once it's done, you're still getting 3% a day like a little garden, but you can actually start withdrawing um, every now and then, you know, to take some, to harvest, essentially, to harvest your your uh, your truffles. You can sell those, you, you harvest them, and then in, in turn you get pigs BUSD LP back out, and you can sell that or put it back into the pools and farms, whatever, however you want to do it, right? Um, so this one, I would say, is still lower risk than the garden because we have the option of time locking. So the reason to me that indicates lower risk is that on the, on the one hand, you're, you're locking longer where you can't harvest. So it takes longer to get your ROI, but you have a chance of making more, which I think gives me a lower risk in my mind because I'm, I'm have a greater chance of outpacing any of the decay that's happening. So that's really the full rundown of the whole ecosystem. And now if I was new to everything, a lot of people recommend using the faucet as a base. I'm getting like around $3 a day right now. I'm going to compound because I'm almost at $5. So I would use the faucet as a, as a base. I would um, say that's either that or holding the drip token, right? Because the drip token is going to be lowest risk just holding it if you think drip's going to come back up. But um, by not putting it into the faucet, you're missing out on that 1% a day. So this is higher risk because if during the time that you hold it, drip just tanks completely, I suppose you could still be claiming your one, you'd still be getting your 1%, um, but drip just wouldn't be worth as much. So you are locking in your principal. You can't use those funds for anything else. You can't sell this deposit. I can't do anything with this. Um, Although depositing and staking does help the liquidity and protocol, the whole protocol, the ecosystem as a whole, uh, because that's just what it does. That's the whole purpose of uh, locked stakes where you can't pull your principal out willy nilly whenever you want to. Um, and then all the transactions are, of course, fueled by these fees. And um, I'm sorry, the whole ecosystem is fueled by these fees and the whale tax. Like, if you're a whale in the system, you get taxed ex uh, increasingly a higher percentage on your transactions, and that also helps the system last longer. But um, I, I digress on all of that. Uh, holding the token, you could do that, or you could throw it in the faucet, um, and then just moving on up the, the risk, we have things like the farms and the pools and, uh, and pig pen, piggy bank, drip garden. But that's, that's the whole ecosystem. That's the overview uh, obviously I can't tell you what to do with your funds, but hopefully that gives anyone who had that question, who was a little uncertain, more context as to, um, more context as to where they might want to put their funds or what, the, what they're doing in the ecosystem, how they want to play it. You know, maybe it opened your eyes to some potential strategies. Uh, if you want more information from the horse's mouth, you should really go check out some of these AMAs, some of these clips. Uh, that I've posted from Forex Shark. If you just go to my channel, go to videos. Um, I added a little quick recap of that last AMA, but you should listen to him. You know, here's a four-hour video you could skim through. Here's a three-hour AMA he did just the other day about all the new updates for Piggy Bank. Um, he has these lending protocols coming out. That's bullish, good news for the ecosystem. Uh, the scratch-off lottery tickets, like a virtual ticket lottery ticket system. And then this hour-long video here, he was the Forex Shark was talking more about um, piggy bank as a whole and updates, things that are coming down the the pipeline. So you can get a lot more context there. But I just I wanted to answer that one comment as far as there were a little confusion into what what portion of the whole drip network they should hop into um, and where they should start. So that's my brief overview. Um, and then even further, if you if you look. I'd have to I'd have to scroll back through a bit, but I do have a introduction to um, the garden at, all by itself. So if you're not already in the garden, 
I think I've got like a 40 minute video and then like a quick recap. Yeah, here's like a 40 minute honest review of what I what what I was thinking at least a month ago on it and then like a quick 15 minute recap on that. Um if you're just looking at all, you know, DGen crypto protocols a, 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 as a whole, um I'm also in EMP money and I would recommend checking that out if you haven't. Um their detonator, the EMP detonator is incredibly similar to the faucet and they also have a whole ecosystem of of things to filter your funds through and skim profit all, all along the way as well. So that's something to look into. I've got a number of videos on EMP. Um, but I hope that was helpful. If you found this content useful and if you've made it to this this far, this far into the video, I know most people do not, but if you happen to listen to me that long, congratulations. Um, if you want to like and subscribe for future videos, that's awesome. Feel free to do that. This is also my personal channel. You know, Like I said, I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, that's not my my day job. So you'll see me also posting. If you do sign up, if you do subscribe, you know, get ready for uh, some awful guitar playing in my living room. Maybe streaming some some games here and there. Um, that's something else I, I do on the channel. So be prepared for that if you have your notifications turned on. Um, but yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys in the comments. Uh, if you're also new to all of this, I say this in most of my videos, but join the Telegram that I have listed in the description. If you have Telegram, that's where a lot of these protocols devs uh, end up giving their live AMAs. Um, and there's a lot of helpful tips and users in those communities. And what I do is if I see something incredibly useful or one of those voice chats is going on, or if I post some really relevant updates, I will pin that to the top of my chat. Um, not only that, but we're, we've got like 70 people in there and growing on in my Telegram group and then you know there there's people there that can help you out and then there's people way smarter than me so if you hop in there i can give you all the other links if you're looking for them i can link you to the animal farm telegram chat directly um drip rocket science is a great very mature uh logical group run by uh kelly snook she's she's the one who wrote this article if i click over to it here uh, dripping with confidence, which I highly recommend, by the way, if you're new to drip in general. She's got a really good calculator. She's got a really good, uh, um, yeah, calculator to see kind of to forecast how much you could make depending on how much you put into the system. She's got some really good strategies here for how to play the drip faucet directly. She doesn't talk as much about the other components, but drip faucet, she talks a lot about. And I can link you to some of those Telegram groups. Um, there's one that's you know, really, uh, that she's also running about, they're just analyzing the longevity of drip, the sustainability, I should say, how long is it going to last? Can it last and why? So that's really interesting conversation to be had. Um, yeah, so there's just a lot of, a lot of useful links and, and such that can be provided in the telegram. I recommend joining that if you haven't, um, other than that, just, you know, hop into the comments or the telegram if you have any questions and I hope to catch you guys on the next video. Hope this has been enlightening. Thank you. Have a good one.